Joined by UMass Boston baseball coach Brendan Igerbro. The Beacons coming off of a doubleheader sweep on Sunday to improve to 3-2 and two on the week and get back above 500. Coach, how big was that for your team's confidence? You had a chance to sweep Westcon the other day, unable to get it done in game two, and now back above 500, kind of sitting in a really nice spot in fourth in the conference, uh, just ahead of a number of teams. Played pretty well this week. You know, I think uh, the Southern Main game was a little bit of a – uh, an interesting one just because uh, Amalfi pitched great and, and it was a one nothing game going into the seventh. And then we, we hit a little rough spot late. They had a couple good situational um, at bats late that kind of opened the game up a little bit, but that was a pretty competitive game. Uh, Western was uh, you know, we, we played very well game one and mercy ruled them. And, and in game two, we uh, you know, we did not swing the bats well. Um, and we had one inning where, where freebies really bit us in the behind. And, and that's been sort of the, the tail of the tape this year when we throw strikes and um, we stay away from uh, walks and hit by pitches. Um, our staff has done well, you know, in the, in the innings that we've struggled um, at, in a couple times this year, it's sort of extended freebies um, and, and allowing teams to put up crooked numbers on us that way. So that's something that we're just going to continue to harp on. And as guys get back in a rhythm, Hopefully we can uh, continue to limit that. And then I thought yesterday, you know, the offense really did a nice job um, against Plymouth State. You know, I was uh, excited to see how how well we swung the bats, put up a lot of runs, a lot of hits, um, and, and sort of a good one through nine um, approach. You know, and I thought we did a really good job of taking walks when we needed to, coming up with a, a better two-strike approach, which has been something we've really been preaching here. Um, almost evening up our, our strikeout to walk ratio, which is a key indicator, I think, for success. And, uh, you know, our OBP has been fantastic. So hopefully we can keep getting on base and, uh, you know, causing some havoc on the base paths. I want to start with your pitching. Tyler Arruda is your top returning starter. Alex Amalfi was going to be a starter last year on a staff that had a lot of starting pitchers. How big is it to get both of those guys back and to get some starts under their belt? Both guys pitched really well, and, and both guys are likely to be towards the top of your rotation going into the LEC tournament next week. Yeah, I feel like we have four really good starters. Um, you know, having a Ruta come back after a long, long uh, layoff and go complete game was uh, was awesome. He looked great. He pounded the zone. He changed speeds against Western. So it was really nice to have him back, and he's uh, – He's a calming presence. He's been a starter since his freshman year. He's pitched in a million big games and championship games in the World Series. So he's a guy that we've got a lot of confidence in that he's going to go out and always give you a chance to win. Um, so that was that was great to see him come back. And uh, yeah, Alex looked great up at Southern Maine. He, he had pitched a couple innings against Rick uh, as a starter and looked good for a few innings, was still on a, a pretty low pitch count. Um, and then at Southern Maine, we got to sort of let him go after an inning out of the pen against Dartmouth and you can really see him trending upward, which is exciting. And, um, and the, the other two young guys, Dylan Ryan and, um, and Timmy have both uh, been pretty consistent. Really, you know, I think uh, again, they, they can both really help us uh, on the mound as well. Looking at your offense, one of the keys this week, at least in my eyes was two of your seniors who had been scuffling or a little bit hurt really kind of opened up this week and had big weeks right at the top of your lineup, Ben Irvine, Steve Brookwell, guys that came in highly recruited coming in from uh, at one point in their careers, division one programs. How big is it for those guys, especially as seniors, maybe they can shoulder a little bit more of the load and the pressure for you guys to kind of table set in front of those big bats in the middle of the lineup. Yeah. I mean, they both, uh, they've both had, uh, they've both gotten healthy uh, and they've both uh, just, really, I think, worked on um, having more of a middle-of-the-diamond approach. You know, I think when, when a lot of uh, young hitters get into trouble, their shoulder pullers, they're trying to do too much with the baseball. Um, and, and we've really tried to focus on staying middle of the field. We've been really working hard off the, the hack attacks with, with a lot of sliders away because it exposes you right away if you're, bail, if you're wailing and bailing and you're not staying middle of the diamond. Um, and I felt like that really helped us this weekend because we saw a lot of uh, – we saw a lot of spin versus Western. We saw a lot of spin versus uh, Plymouth. Um, so hopefully that's something that we can continue to, to continue to do well. Another player who really stood out, Devin Slattery had come on once as a freshman, as a defensive replacement, didn't get an at bat, started all five games this week at second base and, and provide, provided some really good depth at the bottom of the lineup. What have you seen out of him? And what does it mean to have that kind of production hitting just under 400 on the week out of your second baseman down in the, maybe that eight, nine spot. Yeah. I mean, he's really helped lengthen the lineup. He's a guy that we knew when we recruited him. 
um, that he's a heck of a hitter. One of our uh, alums, Matt Juck, uh, had, had coached him and it was really, uh, really highly regarded as an offensive player. He's got some energy. He's got a lot of confidence. Um, and he's a guy, you know, earned an opportunity, you know, so we're glad that he's, he's out there and he's doing well. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see that he's, uh, he's taking advantage of the opportunity. This is a fascinating final week of the regular season. You go to Rick, you host number one East Con and nationally ranked side, and then you travel to Keene State. At fourth in the conference, nothing's locked in, but you probably will get into the LAC tournament with at least two wins. How do you attack this week knowing that there's a very short turnaround? The LAC pod starts on Thursday, especially pitching-wise. Um, you you want to win these games, but also you want to have those arms fresh to potentially play a couple of games on Thursday, a game on Friday, and hopefully to get back to that LEC championship series in the new COVID format. Yeah. And I mean, typically um, we always want to go kind of one game at a time and not look too deep in the future, but because of the uniqueness of the tournament this year, um, the one thing that, you know, typically once you start the tournament, it's, you know, you're playing every single day, it's a ton of games, you're using a lot of arms. Um, but this year, for whatever reason, they decided to play a day off a day, play a day off a day. So you can really attack it a lot of different ways. Um, so that day, day one of the conference tournament, if you, if you lose, you got a day off and then you come back again, if you win, you're going to play two on the first day. Um, so it's, it's interesting and and we got to give a little bit of thought on how we want to attack it. I think our focus first and foremost is on Rick. Uh, we played really poorly against them last time. So I'm hoping for, uh, a bounce back performance tomorrow. Um, we've got a couple of, uh, of big arms, you know, available. So I'm excited for that. And then we got to figure out how we're going to attack Eastern and Keene um, because yeah, you're right with the Sunday double header, um, you know, maybe guys won't lengthen out as, as far as they might. And, and, and we've had this some years before they changed the, the final weekend to a Friday. We used to always play on Saturday. Sometimes it would get rained out. You play on a Sunday. So um, we've had to deal with it in the past, but I think, yeah, we will definitely have to be, uh, intelligent on how we use our arms because you don't want to roll into a tournament with a bunch of guys on short rest. So we're going to have to kind of uh, have an approach with that. Finally, coach Saturday is senior day. It's a large senior class. Some guys might be back next year, depending on how many classes they have left uh, before graduation. What is this group meant? You've got some four year guys and you've got some guys that have come in last year, even this year and made a big impact on the program. Really excited to honor those guys. We'll still honor them as a team uh, and look forward to, to having them come out and play really well at their final game at Monon Park, potentially.